Alrighty, welcome to our sixth and final part of our Fast Facts series. And uh, we're ending with a good one that I think is becoming more and more relevant for people here in Central Oregon as the entrepreneurial spirit has taken hold of Bend and we have, which we celebrate. And we have a ton of people that have moved here and are either working remotely or uh, have started their own, their own businesses because they can work from anywhere. And we've run into an issue a handful of times and that is does being self-employed negatively impact your ability to get financed? And the answer is yes, in a lot of cases it can, but there's also a lot of ways to get ahead of the game and make sure that you've uh, prepared the right way so that it actually isn't an issue come time to get financed. Yeah, that's exactly right, Grant. I mean, I, it's definitely not a negative thing to be self-employed, but when it comes to qualifying for your loan, there's going to be some things that the lender looks into. A couple, we've had a couple very disappointing situations where uh, a high earner moves to town. Maybe they're a doctor or an attorney, and they're starting their own office here and moving from a previous occupation, maybe for another firm. And the lender, lenders do not like that. They like no. to seek what they call kind of a seasoning period. So it's it's I think typically two years. In some cases, it can be one year of tax returns to kind of prove that income, prove how you're doing on your own before they'll allow you to, or they'll approve the loan. Okay. Um, you know, even if you were making $2 million a year with your previous job, they don't really take that into consideration since you're kind of starting fresh in this new position, new area, new job. And you don't even have to move cities, really just moving, moving jobs will do that. And like, like I mentioned, it doesn't really matter if that's a, you know, $40,000 a year job, or if it's, you know, a $5 million a year job job. It's, yeah. it, they need to see that season seasoning period to essentially just prove that this startup or new business, or new venture is going to be successful and you know make the money that you claim it's going to make. And that if, if you haven't bought a home, maybe you've been self-employed for decades and you haven't bought a home in the last eight to 10 years. And so you're kind of confused, like this isn't how it's gone for me in the past. And you'd be right about that. But in the last eight to 10 years, since Dodd-Frank on the heels of our last housing recession, uh, the rules have changed, so no longer can we do stated income loans. It has to be fully underwritten and prove out your income. And so that's one of the things that's been impacted is with, with self-employed and you know 1099 type borrowers. But again, it's not a death knell. In fact, you know, again, we celebrate it, we think it's great. Just make sure that when you're making that transition transition to self-employment, that you realize uh, you, you might be putting yourself out at least one cycle of tax returns and maybe two before you're going to get traditional financing. That's right. Yeah. And, you know, I guess a couple other things to add would be self-employed folks tend to have a little more sophisticated or complicated tax returns. So sometimes they need to do extensions and those tax returns aren't as timely to get over to their, you know, lender and or accountant. Um, and then, you know, income can also be very seasonal depending on what you're doing. It, uh, I mean, with the tax returns, that doesn't matter, but it's it's more inconsistent, so that might. But if you're somebody like that's that. self-employed, you've already bet on yourself a little bit in yeah. business, and so if you've done it once, the other thing to look at, and we can we're helpful in this and connecting you with people that can help, is we're talking about the traditional box of financing that it we call it conventional that fits into the Fannie and Freddie uh, ability to kind of be sold on the secondary market. There is there are lots of either portfolio or private lenders. And if you feel confident in your income and your abilities to uh, you know, pay back a loan and are willing to maybe even pay a little bit higher interest rate for a short term just to get into home, we can set you up with somebody that if you don't fit into the traditional box, we can get you into um, kind of a different box for financing as well. That's a good point. Great yeah. point. Well, hope you enjoyed this series. We'll come up with something creative for the next one. But uh, at this point, we're probably into summer, huh? I think we, yeah, we probably are. In fact, we're, I don't know why, I, we're probably not wearing these types of clothes <laughs> by the time we film this next. <laughs> anyway, uh, reach out to us with any questions, buysellben.com, Grant and Matt, signing off from this series. Thanks for watching. God bless. Hey, thanks so much for watching today's video. If you haven't already, make sure to follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Our handles are shown here on the screen, and you can always find our contact information or more about us on www.buysellbend.com. Thanks.